Hi, I'm Vic, and welcome to Geeko Farm, where we do things differently. It's an open and shut case. In a minute, we'll do something spectacular and pyrotechnic. Meanwhile, we have all this flammable fluid to deal with, which you may recognise from the handshine and moon sanitizer episode previously. Now, we did some distillation. When you do distillation, you have stuff at the front of the distillation that comes off first, definitely usually called uh, the heads. And then you have stuff in the middle that you generally want, called the hearts. And then you have the funky stuff at the end um, that still has alcohol in it, called the tails. Now, generally you just throw that in the still the next time around to extract the alcohol. Oh, by the way, that squeaking noise in the background is the dog extracting the squeaker from a stuffed toy. Yeah, he does that. Anyway. Um, Funky taking, tasting stuff um, does actually sometimes have some good flavour in it. So, without further ado, and I may chop and change because otherwise this will get tedious, we will throw in these which are actually from the heart, so they're from the middle. I know they're good. Yeah, smelt them before. We're keeping those. So they go in my big beaker which I've cleaned all the cyanide out of. There we go, we'll have them. Now we'll go through the rest. Now, there's some chemicals called aldehydes that really make your eyes water. Uh, and there aren't any in this one. <laughs> so, um, uh, smells very sweet and aromatic. Does it, but does it deserve to go in the rum? Well, one way to find out. Now this stuff is mind-bogglingly strong. It's you know, about 140, 150 proof. Um, and if you start trying to drink that neat, um, all it will do is just take the top off your tongue. You won't be able to taste the damn thing. So, uh, careful with that. We don't want to get any uh, of this on the table. It might strip the varnish off. There we go. In there. So, we'll put a little bit of water in there. Oh, it didn't sizzle. <laughs> Swirl it around, it goes alarmingly cloudy for a little while. Give it a snort, hey, yeah, yeah. nice fruity tones to it. Mm. You know, I might hang on to that one. It's got a certain note to it that I may want in my rum. Smells slightly of nail varnish. That one, same sort of smell, but not quite so sharp yet. So, mm. I think we'll have that one, but I'll test it before I chuck it in. Oh yeah, yeah, that one's going in. Now we're coming to the ones that are distilled after the big jars, the tails. Notoriously smelling of old sacks and dolls' socks and that kind of thing. And that's definitely cheesy, that one. So I'm not happy throwing that one in. That one smells a bit like mm, a few day old milk. So I'm not so happy about that one either. That one, yeah, we've gone off milk, we're going into Stilton. That, that's, yeah, we're not having that one. Okay, so I will sample these and see which ones actually taste okay, because sometimes the smell is a bit strange, but they taste okay. Sometimes you want a bit of a strange flavor in your rum. Um, and also, this little Jenga thing down here on, on the bench, these are pieces of, of white oak. And I put these uh, in the rum because I haven't got any oak barrels and it still infuses the, the oakiness into the rum. So you end up with a fine oak rum looking not entirely unlike this. And um, well, that's basically how I make my rum. Let's go and do something with it. And back in the kitchen again. In the rum episode you may have heard me talk about Bananas Foster. Oh yeah, smells like Bananas Foster. Well, let's make some, shall we? Obviously, bananas. Um, you'll need a good big chunk of butter in a nice big skillet. About the same volume of uh, brown sugar. I'll just put a little pinch of cinnamon in there. 
Um, the original recipe calls for banana liqueur. I haven't found any banana liqueur that doesn't taste like a plimsoll. Um, so I'm using a bit of uh, freshly squeezed orange juice and uh, some of the zest of said orange. And finally, uh, you will need some rum. Now this is our fine oaked rum, over a year old. And you have to get the amount of rum you're going to use exactly right. So I'm there. So We're going to be serving this on waffles, which is why you'll hear the occasional annoying beep from our fancy waffle maker. People often leave the bananas uh, just cut in half, but I found that I could get them uh, more thoroughly cooked uh, in the frying pan if I you know, cut them in quarters. They're easier to shuffle around into the warm spots. Now we're going to be cooking with alcohol. So I've got my hair tied back and um, hidden out a few under here. We have one fire extinguisher and a wet tea towel, just in case. Uh, all right, let's get the waffles going. Butter's melting, in goes brown sugar. Just want to dissolve this a bit. Um, don't want to heat it too quickly because uh, we like our bananas nice and soft so things are going to be in there cooking for some time. Just as soon as I've got rid of all the lumps we'll put the bananas in. Alright, banana time. Time for this. And there goes the orange juice. some caramel, um, we want to get our bananas cooked through, soft, and we want it hot because this is going to get spectacular in a minute. Let's check on the waffles. And there we go. Alright, waffles. Well that's all looking good and caramelised, time for the rum. Now for the spectacular bit. All flammable stuff out of the area. In goes the rum. Nice little lighter. Yeah! Now nah, that's what I'm talking about. Turn the heat off now. Oh yeah. Oh, the aroma's coming off this. Fantastic. Still on fire. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Bananas Foster. Alright, Bananas Foster and Waffles up. But for now, that's your lot. Down on Geeko Farm. Excuse me, we need to be alone. And of course, we can't forget the good old dog. Would you like a treat, Rocky? Or maybe the cat.